Hi, everyone. My name is Maggie McGill, and I'm a CTE Territory Manager for CEV Multimedia. I am currently residing in California, so I cover California, Arizona, Nevada, Washington, and Hawaii. Um, in today's session, I just want to go over all of the great ag science content and industry certifications that are tested for on ICEV online. I know that a lot of you have used ICEV this last year because of distance learning, which is wonderful. Um, but I think as you've gotten into the platform, you've realized that ICEV works not only for distance learning, but it works for in-person and hybrid as well. So I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the Ag Science site. We're gonna talk about all of the CTE courses that are available to you when you have a teacher subscription. We're gonna look at the judging and leadership playlist. We're gonna look at the subject area playlist, and we're gonna focus a little bit on the agriculture industry certifications that are available on our platform. Before I jump live into ICEB, I just want to remind everyone that we are having a CTE inspired virtual conference. The dates are July 27th and it's going to be repeated on August 9th. So what you're looking at right here is a way that ICEB can help support your organization, WAAE. So what we would love for you all to do is to use this QR code to register for CTE Inspired. And this conference is free to attend. When you register with this uh, QR code, it's connected to your organization. And so you're automatically going to get extra points on your account for the CTE Inspired. And those points, the more you, um, the more your points increase, you can win prizes. We're doing all kinds of giveaways. But then even more importantly, when you use this QR code for every person that registers for CTE Inspired through this QR code, we're going to give a dollar back to WAAE. So I hope that everyone will join us. Um, even if you can't be there live on the dates that are on the screen, um, your registration will give you access to all of the recorded content. So we look forward to having everybody there, and I'm going to be passing out these cards as well at the conference. All right, so let's jump live into the ICEV platform for a quick tour. So most of you know, who have already been on board with us for the last year, know that this is the teacher dashboard. This is where all of your courses sit when you set them up, okay? So you can see that I have a ton of courses set up. Visually, you might notice that some of my courses have a blue ribbon next to them, and some of them do not. That means that this is a certification course, and then we also have a regular floral design course that is not a certification course. So you can see I have a lot of certification courses set up on here. So first, we're going to look at all of the content that you have access to when you have a teacher subscription with us. Remember, they are annual. Um, so that's 365 days. They start at 850 for the year for your teacher subscription, but they can get all the way down to 700 a year if you have multiple teachers on board. And I think that might be six or seven teachers would get you down. So um, students are always $10. Um, student licenses allow your students to log in, to register for these courses, and they see the content that you want them to see. So our content's delivered either through video or PowerPoint or a hybrid of the two. Along with that, there are all kinds of activities and projects that are really meant to reinforce what's happening in whatever lesson that you're using. Um, those activities and projects are there to foster communication and collaboration and critical thinking. So we're gonna look at some of those projects. Um, and then there's an interactive section of the platform. And this is really where those student licenses come into play because when they complete things through the interactive section, everything's automatically graded for you and the students get immediate feedback. 
Now, if you are interested in your students earning an industry certification exam, they do need to have a student account. All right, so one other thing I just wanna make sure everybody's aware, I, I always tell all my teachers this, but just as a reminder, let's say you buy a teacher license with 30 students. You can set up as many courses as you'd like and those 30 students can be in as many courses as you have on your dashboard. All right, so let's go live into the platform and I'm gonna start by adding a new course or certification. So what happens is it brings me to this next page and I'm under the Ag Science. By default, it puts me in this course playlist. So here are the courses that you get access to when you have a teacher subscription. This is a ton of content. These are pre-made courses, but they can be customized meaning you could resequence the lessons, you could remove lessons from them, or you send to them. So pre-made, you can customize that pre-made courses, and you can also create a custom course. And I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit as well. So all of these courses you have access to. You'll notice that some of these courses have an AFNR in front of them. That means that we have provided a standards alignment document to those AFNR standards. I'll show you where that document lives. And it's always in the same place for every one of these courses that has an AFNR in front of them. So again, all of the content here that you have access to. We'll come back to this and set up a course in a little bit. All right, judging and leadership playlist. This is all of the content that you have access to to get ready for all of your FFA um, competitions. So your CDEs, everything is here for you. So you're gonna have all of these uh, judging and leadership playlists available. You can set these up. Your students can register just like they do for a regular course. They have access with this as well. The next thing, subject area playlist. I really wanna make sure everybody is focused in on this subject area playlist because we have some wonderful new content available. So we've got some neat evaluation content. We've got some carcass fabrication content. Um, we have a new cows and climate um, content as well. So make sure that you check out this brand new content. It is fabulous. If you have a meat team, you need to be checking out these meat evaluation and the carcass fabrication. Really important, brand new content. Next tab over is the certification playlist. So these are all of the certifications that you would have access to when you have teacher and student certifications. There are a ton of ag certifications in here. I'm sure that you recognize a lot of our industry partners. Um, so BASF plant science certification. We've got the Elenco Vet Med. We've got the American Meat and Science Association. Basically, these industry partners have written these certification exams and they're taken through our platform. We provide all of the curriculum prep material to get your students ready to take and pass these exams. These companies have put these industry exams together because as a hiring company, bringing a new prospective employee into their company, they have certain things that they would like that, them to have basic knowledge and skills about. And so that's really why they wrote these certifications is these students should know, have this background of skills and knowledge when coming to apply at our company. All right, so again, course playlist, judging leadership playlist, subject area playlist, certification playlist. So for today, I think I'm gonna set up this BASF plant science certification. So that's gonna be one thing that I'm gonna set up and I'm gonna add it. And then I'm gonna to go to the course playlist and I think I'm gonna set up, um, let's do this animal systems career, this AFNR course. So I just set up two courses. We're gonna add this. Now I'm gonna press finished and those courses are gonna be at the bottom of my dashboard. So here they are all the way down here. All right, so let's look at this first one, the AFNR Animal Systems. Remember how you um, register students, that's through this Invite Students. Now it's a little bit different with Google Classroom. 
different with an LMS like Schoology or Canvas. But, but if you're having your students directly log into our platform, you set up your course, you invite the students, you share the course code with them, they go here, they enter their course code, their first and last name. We do not need an email unless you're using Google Classroom, then we need that student's Gmail, username, passport, uh, password, and security question, and they're registered for the course. If you're using an LMS, you really don't have to do anything as far as registration. Basically, when you purchase with us, we give you a key in secret, and then that allows you to um, Im uh, import our content into Canvas or Schoology. While I'm talking about that, I do want to make sure everyone is aware that we've got some great uh, enhancements or updates coming for LMS systems. So you will soon be able to, it's being worked on this summer, um, basically import an entire course right from ICEV into Canvas or Schoology. So that's going to be a, a huge feature. A um, couple other things. Um, in, this year in Canvas and Schoology, we're not able to hide answers. So when, when students were completing interactive activities. So that is something we are working on to update um, to basically allow you to hide the answers within an LMS system. So just that's just a couple little quick peeks into that. If you're a Google Classroom user, you might have noticed that we've already released this copy lesson visibility settings. So when we get courses, you're gonna understand what that means if you've never been an ICEV user. But basically you check next to activities, projects, interactive content, what you want your students to see, you uncheck it if you don't want them to see it. So if you really customize a course and uncheck or check certain things, and then you wanna copy that course for another period and not have to go into each course separately and work on those visibility tools, you now can copy those visibility settings. That's a pretty big deal and a pretty big enhancement. All right. So one of the things I wanna talk about is that standards alignment document. So this is your AFNR correlations and suggested pacing guide. Animal systems, career pathway. Basically, we're telling you that there's 192 days of available teaching. So those of you that have used ICEV, you already know that we provide a ton of content within each of our lessons. You also know that you have autonomy over everything that you do inside of a lesson. That means you can pick and choose what you want your students to do or not to do. So don't let the 192 days overwhelm you. You guys have choices within each lesson. Basically, this standard alignment document is gonna give you the standard here, and it's gonna tell you what ICEV lesson is covering that standard along with the days of teaching. So this is a great document for those AFNR standards. Before we get into a lesson, I'm gonna open up the special populations guide because I want everybody to be aware it's here. We work hard on this, providing you with information for modifications and accommodations for special populations. There are a ton of tips and tricks in here for working with special populations. Wanna make sure you're aware that that special populations document is always gonna be in this top right-hand corner. Any course that has an AFNR in front of it, your standards alignment document is going to be here. All right, we're not gonna get into too much of these course settings because I just wanna make sure that everybody understands how our content works. So first of all, I am looking at this first lesson that says getting started with Bulb. Bulb is a digital student portfolio. Let's say you don't want to do that. So let's customize this course real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and press customize. And now my course is on the right-hand side. So here's that bulb lesson. Here are all the lessons in the course. On the left-hand side, this is my access to all of the lessons that I have access to in ICEV, which is everything. If you're an ag teacher, all you're gonna see over here on the left is all the ag lessons. And that's for all of that content that I showed you in the very beginning. So I don't wanna do getting started with bulb. I wanna remove that lesson. Now I can get it back if I want to, but I've removed it for now. Maybe I want to resequence some lessons and I wanna put that animals and society up there. So you can resequence, reorder lessons as well. And then if you wanted to, you could add content into this course. And there's a few ways to do that. One is through a keyword search. 
basically, I want you to keep it singular and keep it simple. That's really you're going to be your best way to use that keyword search. You should also clear your results every time. You can also search by subject or alphabetically. So I'm going to go ahead and press by subject. And now I'm going to look at all of the ad content we have. So you're going to see a ton of things here. And let's say that, um, you know, I'm going to put some meat judging in here only because, let me think about this here. Um, actually, I'm going to take that back. We'll look at that separately. So let's say you want to put some leadership um, lessons into this course. So all I did was press that area, and now I can see what I want to add. These are all the lessons that came up for um, leadership. So, yep, I want to go ahead and add that. I want to go ahead and add that. So now those lessons are down here at the bottom, okay? Again, you might not necessarily add those lessons that I just did, but you have access to everything. You press finished, and now that course has been customized. So that's a really simple way to work with our content and get it the way you want it to look. All right. So... Just to quickly go over how everything works within our platform, if you're not familiar with it, let's go ahead and view this first lesson. Remember I said content is delivered through video or through PowerPoint. So this particular lesson is going to be delivered through PowerPoint. Every lesson has a lesson plan. This is a really great resource for you guys, especially the ones that have to turn in lesson plans. Goals, descriptions, common core standards are available here and then your daily pacing for this lesson. So I'm gonna make the same comment I made about the alignment document and the 192 days of teaching. I do not want you to feel overwhelmed if we're telling you this is nine class periods to finish animals and society this lesson. These are 50 minute time blocks. So number one, 50 minute time, time blocks for each of our uh, pacing days. But remember, you have the complete choice over what you want to do inside of each lesson. But we're going to give you the basic pacing. We're going to tell you how many slides to cover. We're going to tell you what handouts your students should have. We're going to tell you when to start an activity. We're going to tell you when to start a project, when to deliver an assessment. Again, you can follow it as closely or as loosely as you'd like. So you've got your daily pacing. You have your lesson links. You have your CTSO alignments here. Then you have your career connections. This is like bringing an expert into the classroom. These are people that we interview all over the country. And we ask them, who are you? What's your job title? What's your education and background? What do you do every day in your job? Do you like it? What's your advice to students? So I will show you where those career videos live. So it's like, again, bringing an expert into your classroom. And then you have lab activities and you have projects. The beautiful thing about ICEV is that every lesson is formatted the same way. Once you figure out how they work, you are good to go anywhere in our platform. Okay, I mentioned those career interviews. Those are available in this drop down menu. Again, who are you? Where do you work? What do you do every day? Do you like your job? What's your education and background? Advice to students, those kinds of things. They're all closed captioned. Students can actually slow down the speech in the video if they want. This is a good tip for those English language learners. To get back to the actual PowerPoint for this lesson, same drop down menu, and there you go, we're back. When your students log in, they're going to see everything you see minus answer keys and lesson plans or anything that you've hidden from them. They can watch this full, uh, they can go through this PowerPoint in full screen. You as the teacher, completely up to you how you want this content delivered to your students. You might want to be going over this PowerPoint discussing, um, you know, in more of a direct instruction. You could have your students go through it in, uh, independently, even at home, to get ready for the next day. So there's a lot of different ways to roll out these, um, the content that's being delivered. Okay, not going to get too much into Google Classroom but you can certainly share this PowerPoint with Google Classroom. Instructional materials. So these are all of those activities and projects that are available for this lesson. I mentioned in the beginning, these activities and projects are really meant to teamwork, collaboration, communication, critical thinking. These um, 
typically these activities and projects are good for when you are in person learning. Now, that doesn't mean that they can't be used in distance learning, but they might not, they might need to be modified a little bit. Now, I hope none of us ever have to go back to distance learning, but I just want you to, to make you aware they're great for in person learning. You might have to modify them a little bit if you were to move back into a distance learning situation. Now, hybrid, of course, if you're maybe having kids come in during you know, a couple days a week and maybe working from home, certainly they could do those projects while they're in the classroom. So if there are NGSS standards in a lesson, we're gonna also provide you with a correlation document. So just in this course alone, we've provided you with an AFNR standards alignment document. We've provided you with common core um, standards that are being covered. And now I'm showing you NGSS uh, correlation as well. This is a downloadable version of the PowerPoint. Um, so if you wanted to save it to your desktop and edit it in any way, you could do that. It's not going to go back into our player though, if you do that. All right, we've put a rubric in here for you. So this is to help you grade those projects. If you wanna use it, great. If you don't, you don't have to. So then let's look at some of these activities. All right, so we've got activities, we've got projects. Um, let's go ahead and do animal classification. So very important to realize that they are PDFs. So you're not going to be able to interact with them as far as typing something in. Now there's workarounds for that. So I have um, a lot of teachers that use an app called Cami. This one doesn't necessarily look like your students are going to be um, having to write anything on this. This is directions for an activity. But there might be one, like I saw one in here that said Venn diagram. You know your students are gonna have to fill in that Venn diagram. That's where an app like Cami will come um, in really nicely because it allows you to interact with the PDF. This is directions to a project, which you will find a lot of these projects and activities are gonna be directions. So let's look at this historical impacts, directions for a project. So then let's go look at this, a Venn diagram. So here's an example of something where you would want to print this out if you were in the classroom, or if you were doing distance learning, you might have to um, modify it a bit, maybe use that uh, Cami uh, app that I was telling you about so your students could type on top of this. So activities, projects, everything is here. Vocabulary words, student note-taking, student handouts, it's all here. On the right-hand side, this says visible to students. This means when it's checked, those students can see these activities and projects. This is where you have the autonomy to choose what you want to do or not to do. So maybe I don't wanna do animal classification. Maybe I don't even wanna deal with the Venn diagram. Maybe I wanna take out this student handout, handout animal ownership. Completely up to you. But when you uncheck it, now you've hidden that from your students. So I do have a lot of teachers that really like students to be involved, obviously, in their learning. And they might actually go over all of the activities and projects that are available to the, left, uh, to the, to the students. And maybe the class decides together which ones they think would really help them learn about animals and society. So there are lots of different ways to incorporate these activities and projects. Underneath that, there are paper-based assessments. When you have student licenses, you don't need to worry about printing out paper-based assessments and grading them because they're actually duplicated down here in the interactive section. So that's where we're headed to next. And remember I said, every lesson follows the same format. All right, so these are going to be interactive activities. These are going to be built-in assessments. These top four assessments are five questions each. They are checking for understanding, quick move on. So these are not meant to be high stakes standards, just so that everybody's aware. The green star assessment is actually a little bit longer and it's 10 questions. Again, not a high stakes assessment, quick checking for understanding. The top part are going to be like interactive activities. So you'll notice this says student notes in these first four. That is the same thing as student notes up here. Now this has changed in our newer content and it's being called key concepts. 
it is set up differently than what you're looking at now. Um, I'll try to show you what that looks like. This is the printable version. These are the interactive versions. So in my view, I wouldn't do the student, uh, the printable versions. I would do the interactive versions. It's graded for you and the students get immediate feedback. So in addition to that, there's going to be always be built in vocabulary. And so these interactive activities, and I'm just gonna drag and drop real quick. I'm not gonna look uh, or read the answers here or read the questions. Um, so these are going to be drag and drop, multiple choice, inline choice, labeling, lots of great question types, and we're always releasing new ones. So after they're dragging and dropping that to match the definition, you press finish, you say yes. And now let's look at how I did, which probably is not very well because I didn't read anything. Then it tells me what I got right, what I got wrong, the correct answers. And so that's kind of where we're headed to next is, all right, well, do I want my students to see the answers? Do I not want them to? Um, so again, those of you that have used ICEV before, you've probably already noticed that we've released a new update to the platform. I'll talk about that part in a little bit. We're gonna start over here and we're gonna move to here. And we're going to do this quickly so I can show you some more really great um, certification content and the new meet evaluation. So I just finished that vocabulary. That was exactly the student experience. This over here says attempt threshold. That means how many times do I want to let my students take that vocabulary activity? It's blank right now. That means they can take it over and over again. It is delivered in a random order every time. But if you want to say, no, I'm only going to let them take once. They only get one attempt. If you say two, now they get two. So you have complete control over what you want your students, how many attempts they get. This is back to those tips and tricks with special populations. You could set up a course and have one student enroll in that course. The, uh, the rest of the class could be in that same course, but enrolled separately. Um, the reason why you could do this is for a student that's on an IEP. So now you have the ability to really um, individualize um, the course for them. You could give them multiple more attempts than the rest of the class. They're seeing the same content. They're seeing the same format. Everything looks exactly the same. They're just in the course by themselves. And now maybe you can give them four attempts at an assessment. So depending on what their IEP says, um, it does allow you to individualize um, our content for them. All right, so next thing is visible to students, and that is just like those check marks up here. Do I even want my stu students to see it? If you uncheck it, you've hidden that activity from your students. All right, so here's show answers after submission. This is a new update in our platform. You always could hide the answers, but when you hit the answers um, before our update, it hid the answers and it hid all of the details, meaning what did they get right? What did they get wrong? So it was kind of a bummer. You hid the answers, the students did it, then you had to go back and show the answers so that they could see the detail, which questions they got right and wrong. So that has been fixed inside of our platform. So number one, if you want to hide the answers, you can uncheck that box and now you've hidden the answers from your students. There's a way to hide the answers for the whole course. This is just individually. But here is the question feedback. Do I want my students to know what they got right and wrong? So if you leave that on, but you hide the answers, they're still going to see the details of the question. So this is a new update for us and I want everybody to be aware. We, I didn't address the Google Classroom. You guys can figure out this is the icon to share this content that way. Okay, deactivate on a date. Let's say I want this vocabulary activity done by Tuesday next week. No, nope, wrong date. Tuesday the 22nd. That means that your students have up until midnight on the 21st to finish this. So you can individualize what your deactivate date is for all of these activities. And then the next column is all about your gradebook and do you want to see these activities listed in your gradebook. So if you want to customize your activity and not see grades for the student notes and only for the vocabulary, you can do that. And for the assessments, that's what would show on your grade report. You can always get the grades back. So that's a quick uh, overview of how a lesson works in ICEV. And they all work exactly the same way. So 
let's look at this livestock industry. And I believe this is a video-based lesson, which it is. Segmented out here. Lesson plan is here. Career interviews are here. Interactive materials are here. Inter, um, interact, sorry, instructional materials are here. Interactive assignments and materials are here. One thing I wanna point out, this is an update that we released at the beginning of this last school year is the video transcript. This is everything that's being said in the video up above in this lesson. Why is this important? You can take this and you can copy and paste it into Google Translate and put it into a student's native language. So just another tip or trick or modification for your students or accommodation. Um, so that video transcript is available. You're going to see that this is um, going to follow the same format as the other lesson I just showed you. You have built-in assessments for each of our lessons. If you want to create a longer assessment, you can do that through this Create Assessment tool. I'm not going to dive into it now. If you're interested, come check, uh, you know, email, call, text. We can talk about how to use this. It is good for pre-testing, so creating a, you know, a pre-test. You can use our questions and you can use your, or, your own. A um, couple other things, your gradebook is here. You also have a gradebook for each lesson, but the gradebook, it's very simple. Once your students are registered, you can filter by all students or a particular student. You have a report mode. So what's important about this is that if you, let's say you give your students four attempts, you can average their scores. I personally like all scores because if they're getting multiple attempts, it allows you to see what day, what time, what score they got each time they went in. You have percentage and or points and you can search by dates. When you view the report, obviously there's nothing in here. Your students' names are here. Their scores start to populate here. Let's say this said 80%. You can click on it, you can drill down and you can see how your students answer. You can also download this report. So that's the grade report for the whole course. And then inside each lesson, you also have a grade report. So whichever way you wanna view it, it's gonna work exactly the same way. It's just gonna show some different content depending on how you're, you're looking at those grades. Okay, couple other things, all of these course settings. Let's look at this lesson visibility. Maybe I wanna see what the show settings means. Basically, that means that you can now hide or make lessons visible on a date. Why would you want to do this? Well, maybe you don't want your students to log in and feel overwhelmed and see 25 lessons and you want to hide them from them. Maybe you want to keep your students from moving ahead. So completely up to you if you want to use this. You just, this is how you use it. You have the ability to hide lessons, make them visible on a date, um, or not show them at all, hide them from them. All right, a couple other things real quick. If you wanted to hide the interactive content for the entire course, you could. If you wanted to hide the answers for the whole course, you could. If you wanted to hide all the instructional materials, you could. If you wanted to hide PowerPoints and videos, you could do that as well. All right, so that was a quick look at that course. Let's look at a certification course. So I'm gonna go into the one I set up when I set up this other course that we just looked at. So let's get down to it. I know it's a certification course. It's got a blue ribbon. It's the BASF Plant Science. Let's view this. The great thing about certification courses, they work exactly like our regular courses. You'll see all of the same settings over here. These are all of the lessons in this course. Let's get into one of these. So let's go into plant nutrition. This is delivered through PowerPoint. Lesson plan is here. Career interviews are here. Instructional materials are here. Interactive materials are here. This is how certifications work in our platform, and this is important. This green star assessment has a new meaning inside of a certification course. Basically, every lesson in this certification course has a green star assessment at the end of it. This is how it works for your students, is that we want them to take that green star assessment and we want them to pass at 70% or better. When they do that, they get a 70% on all of the green star assessments. That is what unlocks and allows them to take the certification exam. Now, couple things. If you don't like that 70%, 
you could raise the bar on your students and say, no, you can't take it until you pass at 80% on all of these um, green star assessments. You as the teacher are the proctor. They cannot start the exam or get into it without you allowing them to do so. But best practices, most teachers want their students to take the green star assessment and they want to pass at 70% or better. Now your students don't know that it's just the green star assessment that they need to pass that will allow them to take the certification exam. You don't need to share that with them either. But let's just jump over to a student account. Let me just close some of my windows here because I've got a ton of things open. And I'm gonna go to Chrome and I'm gonna log in as a student. And we're going to look at another certification, but it doesn't really matter again, because they all work the same way. So let's look at the Southwest Airlines professional communications. So what happens, actually, let's look at another one because that's not the one I wanted. Let's look at this one. Okay, so when your students pass that green star assessment, they get a green check. If they don't pass it, they get a red X. So they'd have to go back in and pass that green star assessment. If they didn't finish it, it would say in progress. So on the student side, this is, we want all green checks because that means they pass the green star assessment. And then they're allowed to then take the exam when the teacher's ready, okay? So, the Green Star Assessment really does have an important meaning, meaning inside of certification courses. All right, since we're here and we're looking at a student account, let's look at what the lesson looks like for them. Again, I'm in a certification course, the Southwest Airlines Professional Communication, but just so you get a feel of what the student view is, here are the career interviews. Here's the PowerPoint for this lesson. They can watch it in full screen. Here are the instructional materials. Here are the interactive assignments. Now, this student has a ton of content that they can see. That means on the teacher end, I haven't hidden anything from them. So it just depends on what, again, visibility tools inside the course. If they have finished something, they have a summary, they can actually get in and check out how they did. So now I'm going back to see how I answered these particular assessments that were here. Students also have their own grade book. So just so everybody's aware as well, that inside they have their own gradebook too, just like the teacher one. Okay, so let's get back to that BASF plant science course and let's, um, every lesson again is formatted the same way, but I do wanna talk about something pretty important and that's this box that says required for cert and all of these are checked. So I just told you that we want your students to take that green star assessment and pass at 70% or better. Maybe you don't want that to be a requirement. If you want to bypass that, you can uncheck these boxes and now it's not a requirement. So this might allow you to use your own teacher created content and maybe not use ours. Maybe you use your own teacher created content, but you have your students just take the green star assessment, completely up to you. So once the students are ready to take the exam, you're actually the proctor now I can't simulate this for you guys because I don't have anybody live testing, um, but basically the student checks in, you check the digital voucher box, you approve their exam, you begin it and they see it then on their end. Couple things about the certification exams. They are always 100 questions, 70% is always passing and they are multiple choice. Um, they are not timed, so that means they don't have to be taken um, in you know, an hour. It is kind of an unlimited amount of time that's available to them, but they just can't close the browser. So they can get up, take a break, stretch, but if they close the browser or if they move to another program on their computer, they are kicked out and they have to start again. So it is not timed. Again, 100 questions, 70% is passing multiple choice questions. Um, it does on average take about an hour to an hour and a half to complete. So there are a ton of certifications available. Um, I'm just gonna really quickly point them out because this is a great thing to show your students. Um, why are certifications so important? So let's look at the one we were just set up, the BASF plant science. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that one. So 
before you're getting your students ready or, you know, before you have them register for this certification, it would be a really good idea to go through the certification on our website. There's a video about it. There is um, some, uh, some stuff written about how it meets the need. This is really important. Industry support letters. These are all of the businesses that have written letters of support for the plant science certification and why they feel it's important in industry. This is a really great thing to share with your students for that, why do I need to learn this kind of comment that you get. It will show you what the certification looks like, which by the way, we handle all the printing. We get it sent to your school site and you get a letter from the industry partner as well. And then it will go over all of the standards that are covered in this lesson. So these, every, again, on our website, every uh, certification is um, structured the same exact way. So if you're not interested in plant science, maybe you're interested in the Elenco animal science. So when I go to that one, you're gonna see it's gonna follow the same format, a video about it, how it meets the needs, support letters, what that certificate looks like, what standards are being covered. Now inside ICEV, you guys have all kinds of reports, how they do on the standards, did they pass, what was the average time? There's a ton of reports available to you. So one last thing I wanna talk about, and then we're gonna look at the new meat evaluation is I wanna make sure everybody's aware of our higher certified page. So I'm gonna bring this up just because I wanna make sure everybody's aware of it. Um, let me just find it in my bookmarks here. Here it is, okay. So higher certified. This is another great resource for after your students have earned a certification exam. The reason being is because, and I think I need to, hold on one sec. Let's go back, here it is. Okay, so um, after they've earned a certification exam, we have all of these wonderful resources for your students to use. So customizable flyers, but these handouts, everything I just showed you on, the, on our website, we have one page handouts for your students. So if they're going to interview for a job and they want that prospective employer to know what that certification is about, we have these one pagers for them so that they can print out. In addition to that, we have all kinds of infographics. We have a press release template. So you have a communications department at your district. You can use our press template. You can customize it for your district. Make sure your community knows what's going on and what certifications your students are using. We have how to list a certification on your resume, how to list it on LinkedIn, and a new section on fostering relationships with business and industry leaders. Okay, so there is a ton of content to prepare your students to pass the exam, to um, what should they do after they get a certification. We have everything available for you. Okay, so I've talked a little bit about what's coming for ICEV as far as updates with LMSs, and I accidentally logged myself out. Give me just a minute. Um, so we talked about updates to Google Classroom and visible setting, uh, visibility settings and LMSs, but let's check out some of the um, new content. And I'm just for the, uh, here we go. So let's get in here. I'm going to go to the subject area playlist and I'm going to set up two of these. Subject area playlists, these are not full courses. They're basically kind of like mini courses. Now, as we add more on to the new content, they may then be put in the course playlist. So I'm going to set this one up for right now. I'm going to do that and I'm going to add it and then I'm going to do the cows and climate and I'm going to add that one too, just so we can take a peek at the new content. So before we get into these two, um, I want to talk about what we're updating in our platform. So we are working on new basic um, shop basic safety videos. So new safety videos for shop classes are coming. A lot of you have mentioned, hey, those videos are kind of old. I want everybody to be aware that we have so many ag teachers across the nation using our content. When we take away old videos, um, 
people don't they 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 don't want it taken away. So we are updating that um, we're we're redoing our tool ID. So I just want you to know that we're updating, we're refreshing, and releasing new content. So let's look at these two. Um, I just want to make sure everybody's aware that they are here. So let's look at the need evaluation. And you're going to notice it's going to look exactly kind of like a regular course. You can invite your students. You've got a roster. If you don't want to set this up at the, as a course, you could set up another course and you could customize it and bring these lessons into it if you wanted. But these are all brand new. And I want everybody to be aware that they're here because they are so great. So let's just take a quick pick. I don't know if you guys can hear. Meat carcass judging is the most important class that you have in a meat judging function. The reason why is it really covers all three factors. Most other classes only cover trimness or muscling or cutability, but these carcasses require you to evaluate the quality grade as well as the yield grade in order to come up with the accurate plate. Okay. I'm going to stop this because obviously we don't have a bunch of time. Remember, these meat evaluation uh, videos are brand new. This is really great content. The other thing that avail is available is the cows and climates. I want to make sure everybody is aware of that as well. Both of these uh, new uh, pieces, the new content, they are very, very well done. Again, want everybody to be aware that those are in here. Okay. All right, so I hope everybody enjoys the rest of your conference. I know this is a hybrid, so some people are in person, some people are um, gonna be virtual. I will be there in person. Um, just as a few reminders, please register for our conference. That means we'll give a dollar back for each person that registers with that QR code. Um, please contact me if you have any questions. Um, I hope to see um, my teachers and students renew from last year, and I hope to get some new teachers on board with us. So thank you, everybody, for um, taking the time to watch my session. I really appreciate it, and I hope you all have a wonderful conference. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.